Hey there, my name's Hazel, and today we're talking about one of my absolute favorite mods, Modular Routers. This mod is insanely powerful when you know how to use it, and can help simplify your farms greatly. In this video, I'll explain how routers work, go into detail about every item in the mod, and provide examples so you can have a comprehensive understanding about how to use this mod yourself. If you're just here to learn about one specific module or upgrade, feel free to skip ahead to the relevant section. Everything will be timestamped in the description. Also, if you have any questions about the mod, maybe that weren't covered in the video or something that I didn't explain well, feel free to ask them in the comments. Or you could even come ask me while I'm live on Twitch. I stream all the time and I'm always happy to help. If you find this video helpful or informative, consider giving it a like and a comment to help boost it in that dreaded YouTube algorithm so that other people can find this video more easily. Thanks in advance and let's jump right in. Modular Routers is a mod that consists of four basic types of items which are easily identifiable by their shape. There's the router, which is a block, modules, which are dome-shaped, upgrades, which are vaguely triangular, and augments, which are square. These four item types all perform different functions and we'll cover what each of them do individually. When you first place a router down in the world, it's little more than a iron block that does nothing. But by adding the modules, the augments, and the upgrades, we are able to manipulate it into something much greater. Let's go over the anatomy of what's inside the modular router GUI here. Up here is the buffer. This is where the modular router will hold items that you want it to manipulate. It has only one inventory slot, so you have to be clever about how you use it. Though, as you'll see later, that's not really as big of a restriction as it might sound. Down here, we have the module slots. Each module tells the router to perform a single action. These actions include transferring items, fluids, or energy, placing or breaking blocks, interacting with the world, and more. We'll go through the capabilities of each module later in the video. Every time a router activates, it'll go from left to right, and activate every module that's in there in order, performing all of the actions. This means that the order of modules can make a huge impact on how the router works, but we'll go more into detail about that later. Up here are the upgrade slots. Upgrades are items that you put into the router to change its behavior. There's a variety of them, and we will go into each of them in detail and explain how they all work. In the far upper right up here, we have two little settings buttons. This button on the left is eco mode. When you see the red circle with the line, it's disabled. When you click it, it'll become enabled. In essence, eco mode means that if it's inactive, it'll go to sleep just to save your server's resources and prevent lag, that sort of thing. Over here, we have our redstone controls. You can control routers with redstone and you can define how that redstone affects it. The default mode is always, meaning a router will always run. If you click it, we start to cycle through various options. Low redstone mode means that the router will activate only when there is no redstone signal present. High is the opposite. It means that it'll only run when it is given a redstone signal. When a router is activated using always, low, or high mode, it will endlessly loop through all of its modules. Never, like the name implies, means that it will never run. This is essentially the same as turning off the router. And finally, post mode means that when it receives a redstone signal, such as from a button, it will run through all the modules exactly once and then stop. This is very useful for certain applications where you just want it to do one thing once in a while. Next, let's talk about modules. Here's an example module. Though they all work differently, they do have some things in common. Some of these GUI elements are the same for every module to make it simple. In the upper left here, this three by three grid is a filter space. You can drag and drop items from JEI to put them in this space. And what this means is the router will or will not operate on this item. You can use this button down here to toggle that. Blacklist mode means that whatever items are in the filter will not be used by this module. In this case, this module would not do anything to dirt in the buffer. If you switch it to whitelist mode, the items in the filter are the only items that this module will work on. So in this case, this module would only do something if there's dirt in the buffer. Down here, we have some controls to tell it how strictly it should look at this item. You can tell if you want it to match the MBT data or not. For example, you might want this to only work on enchanted gear that has the protection enchantment. Matching MBT would mean that the enchantment would have to match, for example, if you want this filter to pass. This button down here is for tag matching. This means that similar items will pass the whitelist. For example, if I drag stone into this filter, this means now that any item that has the tag stone will pass the filter, such as andesite, granite, and deep slate. There are many tags out there, such as logs, trapdoors, beacon bases, and many more. This button toggles if the damage on the item 
matters or not for the filter. This mostly applies to equipment, but there are other modded applications. This button here switches between any and all mode. In any mode, any item in this filter will be considered, and if the item matches any of them, it will pass. So in this case, this filter will accept stone or sandstone. If you switch it to all mode, then it must match every item in here using these settings one way or another. All mode is mostly used when you want to filter for very specific items that match various criteria at once, but you're going to be using any mode 99.9% .9 of the time. The last button here is a little bit confusing, but it's a very powerful and important feature of each module. By default, these are set to always continue. That means that this module will attempt to do its thing, and whatever happens, we just go on to the next module. But by clicking this, you can switch it to different modes. The terminate on match mode means that if this module does anything, it'll instantly end that sequence in the router, and the router will go back to the beginning. The terminate on no match is the opposite. If this module fails to do anything, then it will terminate the router, and the router will have to start from the beginning. These are very powerful options that allow you to control conditionally whether or not certain other actions will happen in the router. We'll be going more into details about these later with specific examples to help you understand how these work. Down here are the four augment slots. Augments are items that can be inserted into a module to change its particular behavior. Augments put in a module will only affect that module and nothing else in the router. So it allows you to fine tune how each of the modules in the router will behave. We'll be going into more detail about what the augments specifically each do later in the video. Up here are our direction options. Some modules are direction based. That means that they'll only work in a specific direction. And this GUI allows you to control which direction that will be relative to the router. We will be going over the modules individually, so you'll understand why or how a module can be directional later. But for now, just know this is how you control the direction of the modules. And don't forget, there is this question mark in the corner up here on every module. You click that, and it will give you a brief description over what all these buttons and switches do. If you hover over a module in your inventory, you can see many of the settings that we set inside the module for easy reference so you can tell which module is which. They also have some additional information depending on the module. For example, this sender module has a range setting. We'll be going more into what each of these little settings means later, but it's good to know that you can read what a module does just by looking at it like this. One last important thing about modules. If you put a module into the crafting grid, and then pull it out. This will remove all settings from it and return it to default. Sometimes you just want to reprogram a module to do something different. Maybe your router is not going to be used anymore. So this allows you to reset a module very easily and it works for all of them. Now that you know about how all aspects of modular routers work, let's talk about the specifics of the modules, upgrades, and augments. The puller and sender modules are the backbone of modular routers. They perform the most basic function for routers, and they're gonna be the modules that you use probably the most. The polar modules will pull items into a router, and the sender modules will send those items out. The different numbers in the name represent how powerful these modules are. Let's go over these one by one. The polar module Mark 1 is a module that will pull an item into a router, but only from an adjacent inventory. If we come here, and we put the module in, and then we configure it, the default keybind for this is C. You hover over it and you can push the button to open the configuration. You can also always right click it in midair. But if we come here and we change this to the left direction, you'll see it'll begin to pull the items into the router from this drawer. The Polar Module Mark II is an upgraded version of the Polar Module. You can see it has a range value here. The default range is 12. That means it could pull items from a container up to 12 blocks away. In modular routers terms, that means 12 blocks vertically, horizontally, or both simultaneously. To connect to an inventory, you're going to hold shift and right click on that inventory. It'll do a little bading, and you can see that it's showing that this container is connected. You'll also notice that one of the faces is lit up more brightly than the other. That's because a modular router can interface with the exact face of a block. Some blocks are directional and which face that you connect to matters, such as brewing stands, furnaces, and a whole variety of modded blocks. So you can select the particular face that you want to interface with if that is relevant. If not, it doesn't really matter. Do what you want. If we put some grass in there and then we install our module, you'll see that the items will be pulled into the router and you get this cool animation to go with it. Sender modules are basically the opposite of puller modules, but there are a few subtle differences. 
The sender module Mark 1 has a range of 8, but it's directional. How this works is you put the module in and you can pick a direction. Then when you insert items into the buffer, it'll attempt to send them in that direction to the first appropriate container it can find. The sender module Mark 2 is very much like the puller Mark 2 in that it can send to any container within range, though the sender module has an improved range of 24 to start. Just like the puller module, you just shift right click to select the face and container that you want. And once you install the module, it'll begin to send with that cool animation right into the container. The sender module Mark 3 is the most powerful module of them all. You can see it doesn't have a range indicator, it's missing. And that's because the sender module can send to any container anywhere. That includes different dimensions. We could have a router, as long as you chunk load both sides, send to the nether, to the end, to modded dimensions, doesn't matter. Anything is on the table. All you do is shift right click on the container, same as any of the other ones. Pop it in the buffer and watch the magic happen. Except it does this animation instead because who knows where that item's going. It's very common to use pullers and senders together to move items across a long distance or between machines or any other situation like that. If we have two containers here, we could put grass into one of them. We could tell the router to pull from this one and send to this one. When we combine these two, you'll see that the items are passing through, getting pulled into here and then sent into here. This goes back to what I was talking about, about the order of modules. It pulls and then it sends. The distributor module is an extremely powerful module that can perform the actions of up to eight Polar Mark II's or Sender Mark II's. It can do either, but not both at the same time. If we open up the module menu here, you'll see there's a couple of other options that are unique to this module. The one at the bottom here is, do you want it to transfer out, aka be a sender, or transfer in, aka be a puller? This button up here determines how it will choose to distribute the items. Round robin mode means it'll go one by one and pick each of these in order before cycling back to the start. Random, as you might expect, means it just picks randomly. And then there's also nearest first and furthest first, which means it'll prefer the nearest or furthest container that has items. To give an example, let's put grass into these four drawers. And we're going to use two distributor modules. One, I will say transfer into router, and I will use the round robin mode. Just like a puller or sender, you're going to shift right click to determine which containers this connects to. And you can shift right click on a specific container to deselect it after it's been selected if you don't like where it is anymore. You can, of course, put it through the crafting menu as well, and that will remove all the targets. This distributor will be sent to transfer out with round robin, and I will have it sent to these four drawers. So now if I put both of these modules in, it will start pulling from all four of these and sending to all four of these using only two modules. Normally, this would take eight modules because you have to pull from four targets and send to four targets. But with the power of the distributor module, it only takes two. By default, a router only operates once every 20 ticks, meaning essentially once a second. For each speed upgrade we add though, the time gets reduced by two ticks. And you can add up to nine upgrades, meaning that the minimum time that it takes a router to run at maximum speed is down to two ticks which is quite faster, as you can tell. This enables lightning fast transfer rates. If you want your sender, puller, distributor, or vacuum to manipulate more than one item at a time, that's where the stack upgrade or stack augment comes in. These do basically the same thing, but they're slightly different and I'll get into how they are different. Normally, if I use a puller module, the router will pull the gravel in one by one. But for every stack upgrade that I add, it will be doubled to two, four, eight at a time, 16 at a time, and all the way up to one stack at a time. Watch. 64 goes in, 64 gets transferred. All in one action. This can speed up your farms dramatically, depending on the application. You can also use the stack augment though, which is very much the same, except it only affects a single module. 
Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four items at once can be pulled by this module, but not sent by this module since the augments are only inside this one. Let's go ahead and connect this sender module to a drawer and then pop it back in. If I add 64 gravel here, you'll see 64 gets transferred in at once, but only one at a time gets sent outwards. Usually stack upgrade is what you're going to be using, but if your different modules need to manipulate different amounts of items or do different actions, perhaps the stack augment is more appropriate for that situation. If you combine the speed upgrade with the stack upgrade, suddenly we are really zooming. Look at this. Look how fast it's transferring items. No hopper could ever hope to come close to this. This is many, many times faster. And if we really want to speed things up, we could even repeat the same actions multiple times per router activation. And now it's doing thousands in the blink of an eye. The vacuum module is a module that will suck up items that are in entity form from the nearby area placing them inside the buffer of the router. By default, it has a range of six and works in every direction. However, you can configure it to be directional, meaning it'll only pick up items that are a certain direction from itself. Right now, this vacuum is set to pick up anything within six blocks. So if I start tossing out items, you'll see that they start poofing away and you'll find them inside the router. This module is ideal for mob farms or other farms that drop blocks on the ground for maximum effect, you could, for example, combine a vacuum with a sender. And then when it starts vacuuming up the items, it will vacuum them and then send them like you see here, making this perfect for mob farms or other farms. You could even have a distributor here to distribute to all kinds of different filtered systems or whatever you want. The vacuum module has two augments that are unique to it, and we'll go over them one by one. The first is the fast pickup augment. When this is put in, the router no longer has to respect the pickup delay that is normally present in Minecraft. Usually when you toss an item, it's a couple seconds before it can be picked up. But with the pickup delay augment, there is no delay. It just picks it up as soon as the router does an action. You can see it even picked it up almost from my hand there. The next augment is the XP vacuum augment, which allows the vacuum to pick up XP orbs. For example, if I spawn a pig and then kill it from a place where its orbs won't reach me, you see that the router activated and picked up the XP orbs. Once you pick up enough of them, uh, pigs don't exactly give the most XP. A little bit more. There we go you'll see that the XP is stored in the form of Bottle of Enchanting. What's even better about this is that you can change the type of experience gained. This automatically interfaces with other mods that you may have installed that have their own versions of experience. So for example, I have the Create mod and Industrial for going at it, so I can choose the Create Nugget of Experience or the Essence Liquid from Industrial for going. If you have other mods that have their own types of experience, such as cyclic or other mods, then you can also choose that to have the output in the most convenient form for you. Here's an example farm that you can build using the vacuum module that would not be possible in vanilla Minecraft. I've turned the random game tick speed up to 300 for demonstration purposes for this farm. We have sand sitting on top of string to make this as densely packed as possible with cactus. Normally there'd be no way to collect the cactus and it would simply fall on top of itself and get deleted. But with the power of the vacuum module and using the fast pickup augment, the cactus is picked up instantly and then using this sender, it's sent into this drawer. And it's all saved and not a single cactus gets lost despite them being so close together. The regulator augment is a powerful augment that you can use to change the behaviors of puller and sender modules. A regulator can be inserted into either type and then you'll see a little number pop up here, which lets you select a value. This value works differently for pullers and senders, so we'll go over them one by one. When you put it in a puller module and set the number, let's say six, this means that the puller module will not pull items from this container if that would reduce the count below six. In essence, it regulates this value to be six in this container. You can see it stopped pulling once the value reached six. When you put a regulator in a sender and select a value, this means that the router will not send items to the selected container if it would cause the count to go above the regulated amount. 
So let's see, if I put this here, load a few extra sand in, you'll see it pulls in and sends, but only until it reaches the regulated value. This is very powerful for making sure that you don't use too many of your resources, that you don't overstock something, or it can be very useful if there's modded items that require a precise number of items to be inserted, such as the energizing rods from the power mod. The fluid modules allow routers to move fluids throughout your world. And this could be water, lava, or any sort of modded fluid that you might encounter. The fluid module Mark 1 is a flexible module. It allows you to pull fluids from adjacent containers, such as this tank of lava. It allows you to send fluid into adjacent tanks, such as a tank placed here. It also allows the router to place fluids into the world to create source blocks. If we look at the GUI here, there are various settings. Right here, this setting should remind you of the one in the distributor module, where you could choose to transfer into the router or transfer out of the router. It's also directional, meaning that it has to take or place into an adjacent container or space. As always, you can drag a filter in from JEI, and if it's a bucket of the liquid, it counts as the liquid for the filter. This filter will not use lava. When the router is transferring out of the router, there is this force option. If you turn this on while you're placing a block, it will always consume what's in the buffer to place. So it'll always empty itself, which might be good, but that might lead to some loss in liquid. For example, when you place a source block, and then you place the source block into it, then you place the source block into it, it doesn't actually add more source blocks. So your fluid may be lost. So be careful with that setting. Finally, up here, we have a setting that sets the minimum amount of fluid to be moved at once. The default is one whole bucket, but you can change it to suit your needs. To use a fluid module, you must put an item in the buffer that can hold fluids. That's how the router will transfer them. So for example, I could put this fluid module in. I could tell it to transfer into the router from the left, but nothing happens. It's not transferring lava. And that's because the buffer doesn't have an item that can hold lava. So for example, if I put a bucket in, suddenly it transfers into this bucket. You can also use modded tanks, such as the tanks from the mechanism mod, Though it doesn't work with all tanks, such as the create tank, it won't work with this one. It mostly only works with tanks that you can personally, with your hand, use a bucket on to insert or remove fluid from it. So now if we change this fluid module, we can tell it to transfer out to the right. And you can see it'll actually place the lava for us. And just like the pullers and senders, we could use two fluid modules to start to transfer fluids from tank to tank. If transferring fluids a bucket at a time is too slow for you, you could use the fluid transfer upgrade to speed that up. I have here a tank from the large fluid tanks mod. You can see it's transferring a thousand at a time. If we open up the fluid module, we could tell it to try to do as much as eight buckets at a time to transfer faster, but you'll notice it doesn't do that. To do that, you have to add fluid transfer upgrades to the router. Each upgrade enables the router to move 200 additional millibuckets. This means that if you add five modules, it'll start to transfer 2,000 at a time or two buckets. And you could add as many as 35 of these upgrades, meaning it'll transfer eight buckets at a time at that point. And because it's in the upgrade slot, this will affect every fluid module that the router has, meaning you only have to put the fluid upgrades in once. As such, if I replace this tank with a fresh one, you'll see it gets filled up instantly with all eight buckets. The Fluid Module Mark II is very much like the Fluid Module Mark I, except for a few key differences. The first one is that it has a range which defaults to 12, meaning we can move this router pretty far away and still connect to this tank. As you can see here, it is pulling wirelessly from way over there. The other thing with the Fluid Module that differentiates it from the Mark I is that this module cannot place fluid into the world. That ability is reserved only for the Fluid Module Mark 1. So make sure you use the right module for the task. The Energy Output and Energy Distributor modules allow routers to send power around the world. Now, notice neither of these are an input. We have Energy Output with no options, and Energy Distributor, which only transfers out of a router. But it works basically like you would expect. To use either of these energy modules, you must add an energy upgrade. Right now, I have this iron furnace here producing power set to output into the router. So if I put an energy 
upgrade it and you'll see we now have a power buffer. Each energy upgrade you add adds 50,000 forge energy to the buffer up to a maximum of 3.2 million. You can then use the energy output or energy distributor modules to send this power to a nearby machine. The energy output module is directional and can only interact with adjacent blocks, making it not the most powerful module in the world, but you could use it to set priorities. For example, let's say I have these two machines from industrial for going, but the top machine is my priority and the one on the side is not as important and I don't need to use it as much. What I could do is put in one output module, tell it to go up and then terminate on match. And then I'll put another output module to the right. This means that the machine on top will get powered first and this will terminate every time that it does so to make sure that this one is fully filled and then the one on the right will get filled secondarily. So this module is not as powerful, but it is not in any means useless. The energy distributor has a range of eight and can connect to up to eight machines at once. Just pop it in and it will send power to all of them. You may have noticed that many of these modules have a range value and that the way that the range value is shown is it shows a number, it has a base value and a max value. To change that value, let's say we want to change the range of this sender module. We're going to use the range down or range up augments. They work just like you would think. Insert one of the range downs and you'll see that the range has gone down. You can add as many as the module has range reducing it all the way down to a range of one. You can, of course, do the opposite with the range up augments. Each one you add increases the range by one up to the specified maximum for that module. With a range of 48 as the max for the sender and a range of 24 as the max for a puller, this means that a single router can move items that are as far as 74 blocks apart. This makes it extremely powerful for moving items between your farms, between your storages, or anywhere, really. The placer module is very simple. All it does is place a block adjacent to the router. It's a directional module, which means that you get to pick which direction it'll place. So I can say, for example, up. Then if I place an item in the buffer, it'll place it in that direction. It won't attempt to place blocks if there's already something in that space. But as soon as that item breaks, it'll just come right back. The opposite of the placer module is the breaker module. This one is a very unique module. At a base level, it does exactly what you think. It's a directional module that will break a block and pull the contents into the buffer. It has a very powerful option that lets you filter it using the filter slot, either by the item that will be dropped or by the block that it will be breaking. So for example, if I tell it to filter by stone whitelist so it'll only break stone and match by the dropped item, you'll see it won't break the stone because it would end up dropping cobblestone. But if I switch to match by block and then filter by stone, you'll see it works. The breaker module has another very unique feature, however. If we look at the recipe for the breaker module, it's composed of a module and a pickaxe. However, if you choose to craft it using an enchanted pickaxe, that enchantment will be transferred to the breaker module. In this case, I've transferred Silk Touch to this pickaxe. What this means now is that the breaker module will operate using Silk Touch. You can also put Fortune on here. So now if I filter for stone whitelist match by dropped item, it will break stone because it's intelligent enough to know that it will be picking up stone because it's using Silk Touch. Here's an example of how the breaker module can be used with other modules to create a farm that produces flint. If you need a lot of flint, this is a good farm to use. The first thing we want to do is turn the router off so that it doesn't do anything silly while we don't want it to. We're going to have it pull an item from the gravel here. We'll have it place that item on top of itself. We will then break it using fortune and then send the result to this drawer. And this can all be done within one router. So now when we turn it on, it pulls gravel, it sends flint, and you can see we always get flint because it's using fortune. I, for one, sure am glad that I don't have to make flint manually anymore. Here's a more advanced example. This is going to be a machine that takes in ore and processes it into its fortuned version and also bottles of XP. 
So if we can put our redstone ore here. And we will turn the router off while we're programming it so it doesn't do things that are silly that we don't want it to. We can tell it to pull the redstone ore into the buffer. We could then tell it to place the ore on top of itself. Then, using this breaker module that has fortune, we can tell it to break the redstone ore that it just placed, causing it to drop redstone dust, probably multiple of them, and also XP orbs. We'll then send the redstone dust collected into this drawer. We also want to add stack augments into this module so that it will send the entire stack of redstone at once, regardless of how many we get. Next, we can use the vacuum module with the XP vacuum augment to pick up the XP orbs and store them in the form of bottle of enchanting. We can then have them sent to here and let's add some stack augments for good measure. Now, when we turn on the farm, it should automatically process the redstone and store it for us all using one router. And there we go. Redstone goes in, in the ore form, Fortune Redstone comes out, and the XP is even saved for us. The Activator module is a module that replicates the actions of players that interact in the world. It has three different actions it can perform. The first one is to do a right click. So for example, if we put the Activator in, and it is a directional module, so let's set it to go to the right, I could have it press a button and it'll push the button every time it activates. This can also do anything that a player can do with a right click. You can even put an item in the buffer and it will right click with that item. For example, making farmland, which is an action that normally requires a player to do a right click. The second mode for the activator module is that it can right click on an entity. This means if I put wheat in there, for example, it could feed a cow to put it into lovemaking mode. Or if I put a flint and steel in there, I could have it ignite a creeper to force it to explode. This is a very versatile action, and depending on what items you put in the buffer, you can do a lot with this. Additionally, you could tell it to attack. However, if you do, it does require power. So you're going to have to pop some energy upgrades in and install a generator. Once it has power, it will be able to attack. So you can give it your favorite weapon and watch it slay monsters for you. Or blow up creepers in that example. You can see if I go into survival mode, it will actually, it hurts, it hurts. The activator module has additional options that allow you to control its behavior. First of all, you can tell it if you want it to simulate an action that's done while sneaking or not. Some actions can only be done while sneaking and this will affect if it works or not. Additionally, it has this option for looking, look above or look below. So for example, if I put bone meal in here and tell it to activate to the right, you'll see nothing happens. But you can use the look above or look below to have it look at the blocks that are above its line of sight or directly below. So if I tell it to look below, you'll see it can bone meal the grass right here. The opposite is true as well. If we tell it to look above, it can bone meal a grass that is above its line of sight. Sometimes this matters a lot because there's going to be things that you want to interact on the ground or above or just sometimes modern Minecraft just has some weird line of sight things and changing this can affect if it works or not. The extruder module is a very interesting module that combines placers and breakers, but in a unique way that you might not expect. The extruder module is a directional module, so you will have to pick the direction that you want it to go. But it doesn't end there. The extruder module requires redstone regardless of the mode selected by the main router. You can see it says extend with redstone signal greater than zero. This means that when it receives a redstone signal, it will start to place blocks in a line up to the range, which is by default 16. When it loses that redstone signal, it will then start breaking them instead, putting them back into the buffer. This can be used to convert items, for example, stone into cobblestone. Place down five stone. And when they get broken, they'll become cobblestone. This can also be used to make secret doors or other creative farms. 
Here's an example of a farm I built on an SMP utilizing the extruder module and the Botania mod. Extruder modules place stone, then another router uses the activator module to dispense ender air to transform the stone into end stone. Next, the extruders break all the place blocks, and because the buffer of the routers are full of stone, the end stone drops to the floor and is picked up by a vacuum module and sent to my storage system. It's tidy, efficient, and possibly the most satisfying farm I've ever seen. Because the extruder module is crafted using a breaker module, any enchantments on a breaker module will transfer over to the extruder. So for example, if I take a silk touch pickaxe and make a breaker with silk touch, we can then combine it with a placer to make an extruder that has silk touch. Now this extruder can place stone and then when it breaks it, it will return it back as regular stone, not transforming your material. One thing to keep in mind with the extruders is that they only break blocks that are in a position where they just placed a block. So if you have the extruder in off mode, you can't just place stone and expect it to break. It has to place a block there before it'll attempt to break that block on the way back. It is a little bit of a finicky module as a result. The extruder module Mark II is very different from the extruder module Mark I. It still places items when the redstone's on and breaks them when it's off, but it does not actually place the item. Over here, we have an extra little panel. And this is like a little programming menu to tell it what to place because it places fake blocks. So for example, we can grab some stone here and we can tell it to place, say, five stone to the right. I'll place it in here with nothing in the buffer. And when I activate it, it still places five stone to the right. And when I break it, or, and when I turn off the redstone, you can see it removes them, just like the extruder, except these aren't real blocks. Even in survival mode, you can see it they're not real. They're just fake blocks. But they can be programmed to look like anything. They'll never drop anything when you break them, but you can use these for a variety of decorational reasons. I would say probably the best reason for using this would be to create a really fancy door out of something expensive that you just don't have. The Mimic Augment can be used in an Extruder Mark II. And what this does is it means that the items that you place will be mimicked by the Extruder in terms of hardness, in terms of light levels. Let's tell it to alternate stone and glowstone. It goes in order of the blocks when it places them. I think I got this backwards. That should do. So now when we turn it on, it'll start placing stone and glowstone alternating. And the glowstone actually emits light. At nighttime, you can see that the glowstone definitely is emitting light, just like regular glowstone would. And in survival mode, you can't break them with a single punch anymore, since they are mimicking the hardness of the block in question. But if you break it, you get nothing still. Because it's not a real block, it's a fake decoy. One of the most fun augments in the entire mod is the pushing augment. And it can only be put in an extruder, and it can be put in either extruder. When you have the pushing augment and it places an item, it will push entities. So for example, if there's a mob here, it'll get pushed. The more pushing augments you place in here, the bigger the push power, up to a max of 64. So now if it pushes a mob, they get eaten pretty far. This also works with items that are on the floor or anything else that's an entity in the world. The detector module is a module that will detect if there is an item in the router's buffer, and if it matches the filter, and there is, it will produce a redstone signal. It's a directional module, so you have to pick which direction the redstone signal is sent out. You can also choose the exact intensity of the signal and if it's a strong or weak signal. A strong signal will power a block. A weak signal will only power an adjacent device, such as a piston. So for example, this detector module will send out a signal level of 15 that is strong to the right when there's any item in the buffer, which there is. This will, of course, power a piston, but because it's a strong signal, it'll also power a block. Now, if we change this to weak, it will still power a piston, but it won't power a block to power an adjacent machine. So you can use this to only power the exact machines that you want, depending on what you need. What's more is you can set the filter to only send out a signal 
when the appropriate item is in the buffer. This one is currently set to only activate when it sees a crafting table. So you can place as much cobblestone as you want in here. But as soon as we place the crafting table, there we go. We get our redstone signal. This could be very powerful for altering the devices of nearby machines based on the router. The router could also be used to control an entire system. Or it could be used to alert you if a certain item is passing through your system. The void module is a very dangerous module that you should use with caution. It deletes items that are in the buffer, so you want to make sure that there's not anything in there accidentally that you don't want deleted. And you can see the items just vanish. Combined with some stack upgrades, it can even eat a whole stack at once. I highly recommend that you filter your void modules as to make sure that you don't delete unwanted items. Though the void module is dangerous, it can still be very helpful in farms to delete excess unwanted items. Consider the use case of this micro farm utilizing a router. Let's step through how this farm works. First, it will attempt to pull from the right a bone meal out of this drawer. Then it will activate it using the look below feature to bone meal this crop to increase its growth stage by one. It will then attempt to break the crop, but it's whitelisted to only break the item if the dropped item would be wheat, meaning it'll only break a fully grown crop. Then, if anything's in the buffer, aka a wheat, it will send the wheat to this drawer, and then a vacuum module with stack augments filtered for seeds picks up all the seeds that have been dropped. An activator module will then, again, look below to replant one of the seeds onto the farmland, and then a void module with the stack augment and filtered to seeds will delete all the excess seeds out of the farm, leaving the buffer open for a new bone meal on the next cycle. Notice that we have to use the stack augment because if we used stack upgrade, the puller module would pull 64 bone meals at once, and then the buffer would be clogged, unable to pick up wheat or seeds. Check it out in action. Pretty fast for wheat, and there's no seeds clogging the system. Thank you, void module. The dropper module changes a router to work very much like the vanilla dropper. It's a directional module that lets you decide what direction you want the router to drop items out of. So in this case, it'll drop them out the right. There's nothing much more to it, but it does have a older sibling called the flinger module. And this one has some complicated controls. What this does is it will actually toss an item at a specified trajectory, direction, and intensity. So we can tell it to go upwards a little bit, maybe 10. We'll give it an intensity of two. Uh, don't forget to set a direction. And now you'll see it starts throwing items out of the router in the specified direction. This module is less practical and more just for the fun and display of things because you can make farms that would be normally quite ordinary, quite exciting by having items being flung around like crazy. Though, be careful, of course, having entities out in the world being flung can cause crashes if there's too many of them, and it will eat up server resources, so use this sparingly. Both the dropper module and the flinger module can be installed with a pickup delay augment. What this does is extend the amount of time before that item can be picked up by any means, including the vacuum module from modular routers, other vacuums from other mods, or even yourself as a player. Each one that you add, as you can see here, adds 10 ticks to the delay. And you can add up to 20 augments, meaning that the item cannot even be picked up for 10 seconds. You'll see if I put this here and stand here, it will take 10 seconds before I, as a player, am even able to pick it up. This could be very valuable for farms where you need an item to exist for a little bit to try to do something before it gets picked up or vacuumed up. The player module is a very powerful module that allows you to send items to or from a player directly from a router. So for example, I can set it here to send from the router to the player. If I put stone in, it'll start sending it to me because I'm the owner. The owner is whoever crafted the module. There's different filtering options. You can have it go to your inventory, but not your hotbar, to your armor slot, so it could send armor to you directly, to an offhand slot, or even directly to your ender chest. And these same filtering options work in reverse. The possibilities of this module are endless if you are creative. Possibly my very favorite upgrade is the camouflage upgrade. 
what you do is you shift right click on a block and then when you insert this upgrade into the router it will mimic that block and it could be practically anything including items that aren't full blocks such as a fence or even your favorite flower this allows routers to not only be powerful but they can fit into any base and be pretty because they can be hidden in the floor they could be disguised as a really nice decorative element or anywhere else if you want to find a hidden router Holding a router will highlight all the routers that are nearby to you. So you never have to worry about losing them because they are decorated as something else. The muffler upgrade causes routers to make less noise and make less visual elements as they do their activities. You can add up to three mufflers to a router, which has progressively more powerful effects. Normally a router still makes noises relating to whatever action it's doing. With a single muffler, it will no longer make sound when it's doing its actions. It's breaking the block silently. With a second muffle upgrade, you can disable the visual element of items being sent or pulled to the router. And with all three muffler upgrades installed, the router won't even light up while it's activating. This is very good if you want your router to remain hidden. The blast upgrade is relatively straightforward. It means that the router cannot be blown up by anything at any time. And yes, this does mean that the router is witherproof. The sync upgrade is an upgrade that allows you to have routers function simultaneously. Though, in my experience, it only really affects extruder modules properly. It does seem to be a little bit on the buggy side, so your mileage may vary. But, as you can see when I activate these routers, they're not quite in sync. This one's delayed a little bit. If we add a sync upgrade to each that has a matching value, in this case, 4. Then, when we turn them on, it's broken. As I said, this is a quite finicky and possibly buggy upgrade. Um, sometimes you have to put them in and out to make it work, but here we go. They are nice and synchronized now, and they always will be as long as I don't change the configuration. The sync upgrade has a secondary feature, which is it delays the activation of a router by one tick per tuned value. But despite my best efforts, I could not get that feature to work in this version. It seems like it's bugged and just broken right now. Hopefully in the future, it will be fixed and I can showcase it properly. The final upgrade that I haven't covered is the security upgrade. If you shift right click, it'll become yours. And then when you insert that into a router, that router is now yours. Other people cannot access it to change its configurations or get the items that are in the buffer. What's interesting too is that the security upgrade has a side effect. It makes a router always act as if it is you. Normally a router without a security upgrade is a player though it is not you. So let's see, if I get a pet dog and we convince them to stand right over here, come on. I'll just nudge them. We get them to stand right here and we turn this router on. You'll see that the wolf was slain, but not by a player, by modular routers. If we add a security upgrade, that will change. It was slain by me because the router counts as me when it does actions. For certain modded applications, this is very important. One application that I know of is for vault hunters where it can place vault rocks for you onto the altar and it counts as you, so it'll be your recipe. Surely there's other applications as well, but it's just very interesting to me that this makes it actually you doing things. And it could do anything that you can, even if it has some kind of security or permission error, because it does count as you 100%. The filter round robin augment is a very powerful augment that modifies how the filters work within a router. When you insert the filter round robin augment, it will no longer work properly under the any or all. It will instead cycle through each of the items in order over and over again 
picking each one once each. So if I go white, red, yellow, and then lime, it will always try to pull those items in that order. So let's have it pull from here using the filter round robin. Actually, let's let's put all these uh, wools in first. So we'll have it pull the items in and then just uh, drop them off so that we can see what's going on. Red, then yellow, then green, then white. And it will always keep up the same order. This is really powerful for applications such as the Spectrolis from Botania mod where you have to feed it wool in a certain color, but there's other applications as well. The redstone augment is an augment for a module that will override the redstone control for this specific module. As long as the router is running, then this module will then utilize its own logic to determine if it should run or not. So for example, I could put a puller to high mode and a sender into low mode. And this will only affect these specific modules. So if I put a bunch of items inside of a drawer, now our router essentially has two modes. With the power on, it will pull. With the power off, it will send. So you can see here, power on, it pulls the items in. This one is active because it matches the redstone augment overriding this. And then when we flip the lever, it will now switch. This one works with no redstone due to the augment. And in this way, you can program your routers to have different modes or change behaviors based on anything that's going on. For example, you could use a detector module to send a redstone signal to the router itself to change its own behavior based on the item that's in the buffer. This is a very high level augment, but with it, you can have very much control over how your router operates. Finally, we have these filters, which are special filters that allow you to create very large filters that are very specific so that you don't have to be limited by only having nine slots in a module. The bulk item filter can be filtered with many, many different items. And then you just simply insert it like so into a module. It does not consume the filter, but it applies to this module now. And you can, of course, choose your blacklist and whitelist and all that. The bulk item filter also has a special feature where you can grab all the items in a chest and just add them directly to the filter. So if you have a lot of items and you're already sorted and you know that you want to filter for them, you can just click and ta-da, filter complete, very nice and easy. And you can go ahead and insert that right into your module. The inspection filter allows you to filter items based on their durability exactly, their exact fluid levels, their energy levels, and you can put various filters greater than, less than, and determine if an item passes whatever test you want. Let's filter items based on durability. Maybe I want to find my gear that has low durability so I can mend it. So we can put a filter and it'll search for durability less than 25% now. And this can do any or all, just like the regular modules can. Then you come in here, pop it in, boom. And now this module will only pull items that have less than one quarter of their maximum durability. Third filter is very easy. It's the mod filter. You just take an item from any mod, stick it in this slot. It'll recognize what mod it's from. And then you can add it to the filter. So if we put that in a puller, now this puller will only pull items from the create mod in case you wanted to sort by that way. And finally, we have the regex filter. This uses a concept known as regular expressions to search for certain items based on their name. If you don't know what a regular expression is, it's beyond the scope of this video to explain how to use this, but if you do know how to use a regular expression, feel free to type it in here and filter for items based on their name using the filter. And that's everything there is in the mod. All the modules, upgrades, and augments that you could ever need to make amazing, amazing factories, farms, and everything else. If you found this video helpful or informative, please consider giving me a like and a comment just to make sure that other people can help find this video too so they can be helped. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or come say hi to me live on Twitch. I am live all the time and always happy to answer questions. If there's any other mods that you want to learn about, let me know. I know that documentation for mods can be lacking on YouTube and on the wikis and such. So if there's anything that you would like to learn about, but you just can't quite figure it out, let me know and I can make a tutorial for you. Have a great rest of your day. 
and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.